It's another bombastic episode of Wearable Today. Today, your Apple Watch may be delayed. Yes, there's been some rumors out there. We're also going to be talking about the Tog Hoyer. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, wearable trends of 2015. Games that are invading the Android Wear space, including Space Invader, and a whole lot more. And, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about South by Southwest and some of the wearable technology I saw out there. That is that, and this is this, and you are here, and this is Wearable Today. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine Think Magazine, put in a geek, you've got wearable today, I'm Geekazine. And of course, I'm always joined by my beautiful co-host, if the camera's, yep, camera's still working, Mr. Luke Wallace. How you doing, Luke? Doing good tonight, Jeff. Yeah, having some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. Not very. Uh, and uh, yeah, it'll just... It'll just be doing this all night, so uh, enjoy the enjoy the enjoy the glimpses crash. that you get to see. Yeah, um, well, we may just have to cut this out and and uh, see what happens. But uh, yeah, doing all right tonight, Jeff. You can catch me at Luke Luca on Twitter or Plus Luke Wallace on Google Plus. You know, uh, do you use Chrome on your uh, MacBook? I do. Okay, maybe maybe uh, switching over to Firefox because I've I've been I've done that recently. Mm -hmm. And that's helped out a little bit. So, but we'll see what happens here. So, oh. in the meantime, let's get into the news in what a segment we like to call "Big News Little Arms." Roar. That's Roar. you. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my cue. Uh, give it a start. I think that was the. Uh, that's what uh, happens when we take. Two weeks off. Yeah. So, Tag Heuer, which is the, as far as I can tell, the correct pronunciation of what looks like Tag Heuer, uh, but Tag Heuer, Google, and Intel have teamed up to launch a Swiss, a Swiss smartwatch powered by Intel hardware and Android Wear software. The well-known watchmaker will help bring a Android Wear to the luxury watch market. Uh, David Singleton notes that together they can imagine better, beautiful, smarter watches. Uh, unfortunately, no dates or pricing has been announced, not even a, a glimpse of what this thing might look like, uh, but uh, they are now in talks, and so we'll be looking for that information to come out uh, hopefully sometime this year. All right. Next up, uh, games are invading or wait, no, I'm sorry, that's yours. <laughs> Next up, guest writer Tim Smith puts an article up on, on my main website, geekazine.com. Um, he wanted to write about wearable tech trends of 2015. It's a great article. Um, it includes an air purifier that can be worn on the wrist, a device that maps out your feet, and, uh, and of course, a tricorder glove. And it's not like, you know, Star Trek tricorder glove. It actually tells you how drunk you really are. So you're probably very drunk, so put on the glove to wear the drunkness that is there and go from there. So Now, next one's yours. <laughs> yes. So, games are invading Android Wear. Ironically, Space Invaders is one of those games. The games have very... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The games have very simple mechanics. They're usually just a tap or a swipe. But they can uh, be a fun way to spend a few minutes. Uh, they're not really meant for long, long durations, though. I've also personally played Guns and Glory Heroes, uh, which is kind of meant to be like a tower defense game. Uh, and that, that one's interesting in that the interaction, uh, it has an additional interaction with a smartwatch in that it uses the steps you take during the day to give you more lives so that you can play longer. Okay. Cool. Next up. <laughs> that was, uh, that was, so anyway. Next up, Eric Schmidt says that Google Glass is not dead. What? Say Google Glass not dead? What? Are you simply, real? It's, it's just pining. It's just pining. Mm -hmm. It's just pining. He says mm -hmm. they're planning a release of the device, and according to The Verge, Glass is still going to be called Glass, and a cheaper, uh, a cheaper version will be launched later in the year. And I don't know how much cheaper they're, they're going to be talking about. 
Maybe it's fourteen ninety nine as opposed to fifteen hundred. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this goes against so many different articles that we've just read in the last eight months. And uh, while we know that Google Glass is technically already dead, the, the this version of Google Glass is dead. That and we knew that there was something coming in um, uh, that would be glass or uh, we were we were speculating and were Android Wear glass or something like that. Um, the I, I'm I'm wondering if half of this article was taken out of context because Eric whatever everything that Eric Schmidt went against everything that was said in the last few months when it comes to Google Glass. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But we'll see what happens there and go from there. Up next, we've got a concept called the I-Ring that will be used, or that uh, the idea is that you would control your iPod or potentially iPhone or, or whatever device you've got. Uh, this concept comes from Victor Soto, who imagines a ring that will let you uh, skip forward, back, play, pause, all those traditional controls, and then charge wirelessly in a uh, similarly designed dock, you know, wireless charging. Um, right now, this isn't something that is in production, uh, but it is uh, an interesting concept that could lead to more wearable devices of this sort, you know, very specialized uh, you know, for for limited use, uh, but you know, very functional. All right, and then finally, um, check out the High Smart bag. This is a wearable backpack messenger bag. You can find that can find your phone, take pictures, take selfies, pin locations, voice record, and more. It's got a device on it that I'm assuming it attaches. Looks like a Bluetooth attachment of some sort and what it does is uh pairs with your phone so yeah actually you can take selfies so what you do is you set your phone on the rock or something like that and then step back and then you and you just press a button on your uh on the backpack which doubles as a backpack or a messenger bag which is even cooler on this i like this design a lot and then you just press a button and you can do voice recording you can uh, take pictures um, you can start and stop music or, or whatever you need. And uh, that's over at uh, designboom.com. And that does it for this week's Big News Little Arms. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luke, we're, we're, having, we're having some slight uh, technical difficulties with your camera there. So, um, But we'll, yeah. see what, we'll see what happens here in the next couple of weeks. And you might have to just switch to your MacBook. Uh, uh, eyesight camera and see if that makes a better difference or something like that. Yeah, I I will have to uh, look into that. So we yeah we've been having some problems, but uh, hopefully those are at least somewhat resolved. Um, we'll see. We've had a lot of a lot of shows using the same setup, so I'm not really sure what's going on uh, yeah. here today. So although we've had yeah it has kicked out a couple times, but not as bad as it's kicking out today. Yeah, but yeah. We'll see what happens. So, so um, I, yeah. I I I want to take a step back here for a second because uh, you know we we talk about Google Glass all the time, and I know you've probably you probably have something to really say on this article. Um, well, what what are your thoughts on what Eric Schmidt said on the uh, the release of a Google Glass, like a a smaller version of Google Glass or something like that? Well, yeah, I would say that. If they were going to kill off glass, it seems like they would have killed it off a while back. Um, they would have just said, you know, Android Wear is our new thing. Uh, we found it to be much more successful. People like the price point and the functionality and the look of it a whole lot more. And so we may continue to do glass or come out with something for industrial use or whatever, but we're not really going to focus on it. Like they would just kill it off. So it seems odd to me that. They were, they were kind of saying, no, no, it's still around um, if they were actually killing it off. So I do believe that it's still going to be around, yeah. uh, but I, I have a hard time believing that, uh, you know, it's, it's actually dead. So, uh, oh, yeah, no, no, and know. we've never, we've never really said that it was dead. We, oh, no, we no, just no. said, we just said that they were going to retool it because it doesn't yeah. make sense to have the Glass app, um, the Glass OS. And then have Android Wear, which is the big operating system, you know, the one operating system to rule them all type thing. 
Um, and then you have this little known one off called Google Glass and using the Glass OS. We do, I just, we just, uh, we came to the, or at least I came to the realization that it was probably just going to adopt the Android Wear software OS and then go from there. So, yeah. And but I, I think people forget that we're coming up on three years of when Google Glass was first revealed. Yeah. Three years. Try to imagine another technology that hasn't changed in three years. Like, it, that's just not how things work. It's, that's definitely not how Google works. You look at yeah. what they do. They put out new stuff, like, you know, every few months, it seems like they're putting out something new, especially new iterations of an existing product. So, um, well, I could I could show you one device that Google has out there that hasn't made a change since 2010, but except for little cosmetic changes, uh, updates mm -hmm. uh, for the website or something like that. But there's one thing that Google has, and, and they're just letting it ride. And, uh, and it, it deals with the podcasts, and that's, it's called FeedBurner. If you, oh, ever go right. to, if you ever go to FeedBurner's website, you will see Google from 2010. You will not see Google from 2015. So I, I think they'll, they'll let things ride. They won't build new around the old, which yeah. is why, you know, it, it just it, it, it boggles my mind. How and why Eric Schmidt would actually voice an opinion on this at this point in time, especially since his his uh, relationship with Google is not as much as it used to be. I mean, he's just a board member, right? Yeah, he he's not as involved in the in the design and production and stuff like he used to be. Uh, you know, he used to have his hand, I think, more in that. But um, you know, so. Uh, Three years ago, they showed the form factor that we've both worn many, many times. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, that was almost three years ago. Two years ago, they basically said, okay, now it's going to be up uh, for sale uh, so you can buy it. And then for the past, you know, year and a half, people have been wearing them basically. So, uh, or it was two years ago that I guess the first people started to get them. Um, so... I, it, there's no doubt in my mind that they've been working on better versions of them. And yeah, with Android Wear being so popular, it just makes sense that they've got an Android Wear version of Glass somewhere that they're working on. Yeah. Um, what will that look like? Eh, no one really knows. It'll probably be something similar, but imagine all the same technology refined by two or three years and shrunk down and, and all that stuff. So um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look different when it does come out. So um, yeah, I'm not really sure why why people think that it might be dead. Okay. Well, I, I think we're, we're both saying the same thing here, but I hate to use the word dead because, yeah, because that's that, you know, the technology, they're still going to come out with a wearable glass. Just, and, and in five years, we are going to have a pair of glasses that, you know, the, like, you know, they'll, they'll put, you'll put on your pair of glasses and, and nobody will have any idea that this is, these are Google glass. Yeah, um, I mean, they might be able to tell, like, if they look real close or yeah. they'll see you checking something, it'll be like, oh, hey, is that one of those Google Glass? Yeah, oh, wow, well, it's cool, oh, you know, and it'll be like the smartwatches are where you don't really notice them on someone until they kind of sit there and they start interacting, and then you're like, oh, hey, that must yeah. be one of those smartwatches. So. Exactly, exactly. Speaking of which, I am wearing my smart device. This is the smart device of the week. This is the Fitbug um uh which uh uh the fitbugs uh, over in the uk actually you have fitbug and you have fitbit fitbug a, a, a little geeky note here fitbug has been around a lot longer than fitbit but they're actually changing their direction a little bit they do have their wearable tracking devices but they're also working on these new uh new fit plans and the best part about the fit plans is that they're cross promotable so uh you'll be able to uh you'll be able to use your fitbit and use this plan it, uh, they have plans like the beer belly busting plan and the and the pregnancy the baby fat plans and stuff like that um and uh lots more uh, and i talked with ian who's their uh who's their pr person while i was at south by southwest and uh he's he's telling me some great things that are happening I'm not exactly sure. I don't think this was uh, this was NDA. Um, hopefully, I'm not going to spill stuff out of the bag. But um, they're going to be working with Samsung uh, with this with these plans a little bit closer. And and that's that's all the details I really have anyway. So I don't think I've exposed anything that's that's too groundbreaking. 
um, there. But uh, you can definitely get the plan. You, it, it's basically your own little personal tra trainer, whether you're using the Fitbug or you're using a Jawbone or you're using a um, are you using a Samsung or are you using an Apple device for that matter? So, but that's my wearable for today. I'm trying to do have a wearable on a different wearable on each week, but I'm you know I'm very limited to the wearables I have. So you know I might have to repeat every now and then. So, and of course, you have the uh, Moto 360 on, right? Uh, it's actually charging right now. So oh. I've I've been. That's a that's an interesting story that uh, I'm sure people will read too much into. Uh, <laughs> that is the <laughs> the idea that uh, some days the battery on that thing seems to last forever, and other days not so much. It seems to kind of die oh, yeah. after about twelve hours, which you know I know is still a long time, but you know, oh, not uh, as long as like thirty six hours like it usually get. But think of it this way: I mean, have you ever had you know you had your phone, you, you just uh, you you took your phone. And you put it in your pocket, and then about 10 minutes later, you're feeling the phone's getting really warm. Mm -hmm. And then you pull it out to see what's going on, and it, it didn't update or, you know, some other piece of software is on there. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I, I, anything like that, that, that all of a sudden the battery just drains, I just uh, associate to, to an app that just went rogue for a few minutes. And mm -hmm. then it disappears and, and go from there, so... I wouldn't worry about that too much. So, yeah, I might need to go through and uh, make sure I don't have any apps installed on there that, you know, or like or take off an app or two and see if it uh, yeah. makes any difference. But yeah, yeah, it's there's there's uh, no way to look at the battery usage like there is on Android phones and say what's been killing my battery. Um, <laughs> like that would that would be actually really useful in there. Yeah, but. definitely. Speaking of which, um, another another piece I got here. And I want to show this off. This is called LifeLog, and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit, so I'm going to get a little bit bigger as we go. I got this uh, when I got the, my Sony Xperia Z2, uh, and they updated to the new version of uh, of Android. They put this little soft piece of software on there, and then, of course, I got the Sony Xperia Z3 to test out, which I'm going to have the review up in the next week. Um, and then I got this LifeLog. I put it onto my Nexus 5, and it works perfect. And what it is is, and and, and I gotta focus it this way, because I have the focus off. But basically, what it is is it's a stepper. It, it does a whole bunch of stuff, but it also includes social media. So, like for instance, today I burned two thousand eighty-eight calories, but I didn't do it by walking on a treadmill. I didn't do it by uh, going anywhere. I did it simply by posting, to, posting Facebook or posting to Twitter and stuff like that. As you can see up here, you'll see the little icons of when yeah. I was posting, but if I switch back, and I can go back a few days here, um, let's go back to, here's a big one, it, it shows a lot, I mean, it shows when I'm on a bus, it shows when I'm on a plane, it shows when it was cloudy, when it was raining, um, when I was at South by Southwest, it, this is the day after South by Southwest, did a lot of stuff, um, but as you can see, as as, as if I was walking, you'll, it'll actually turn the guy into a walking icon, let me see if I can, uh, get that going really quick but it, it's actually fairly cool and, and you can download it onto your device and it might work for your device might not work for your device but the, the whole the bottom line is that it's it does more than just than just social media or, or just uh, tracking your steps and stuff like that it's got sleep time it's got game playing time it's got how many photos you've taken um, how many hours of music you listen to how many videos you listen to so it's it's got a full amount of stuff on this and of course it it, it tries its best on each device um, it works best on Sony devices of course but you can download it for whatever device you have there but that one will burn uh, battery pretty quick so anyway just I, that was a sidebar there sorry about that um, do you have any apps like that Luke what that burn a lot of battery or uh, <laughs> or the track I do a lot of a lot of tracking uh, you know, there's, there's several of the Google fitness apps that I use that, uh, do a lot of, you know, kind of tracking. There's a new one that I came across today, uh, gyroscope. It's a website that links a bunch of accounts together. You basically log in with your Twitter, your Facebook, your, uh, you know, whatever you want, uh, Google fit, uh, the Apple health kit stuff you'll be able to log in with. And 
the idea is it'll aggregate all that stuff and build a dashboard that shows you here's kind of everything you've been doing today. Here's, you know, so you can, you can see that and it'll, it'll be through a website. I don't know if they've got an app yet, but um, it's a new service that I saw uh, cool. today. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, 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 otherwise, any, every, anything happened for you in the last couple of weeks that we need to talk about or? Uh, not a whole lot, but I did want to give a shout out. I've got a couple of speaking things that are now much closer. So uh, this Friday, I'll be speaking at a hackathon in Dallas, uh, just real quick, uh, 10 minutes on designing for the Internet of Things. Nice. And then I'll be judging the hackathon, I think, Saturday evening. I know that's when the judging is. I'm not, I just don't know if I'm actually going to be part of the judging panel on that. But uh, And then in uh, April... Uh, the, I think 13th through the 16th, I'll be speaking at mobile dev and test in San Diego. Nice. Uh, so I'll be headed out, headed out to California again to, to spar- start the speaking circuit. Okay. So. And I'm speaking absolutely nowhere except on the show. So, well, that's a great place. You got yeah, I do, I do. I, well, I do need to do some speaking. So, uh, uh, I'll have to, to start figuring out some different things that to talk about, but definitely, um, I just feel like I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not holding up my hand here. So anyway, let's move on here. <laughs> let's go into our next segment. I thought we were done with this segment, but we're really not done with it just yet. It's called the Apple Watch Watch. With a little tick 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 tick. No. All right. Well, uh, you may not be getting your Apple Watch right away because Apple is actually having some issues with building the device. According to Business Insider and a couple other sources, uh, they're saying that the AMOLED display panels are having an issue. While we don't know the exact problem, it looks like a portion, only a portion of the watches will be ready on April 24th. Um, there was a they they were they were ordering about three million watches. They are only going to get 1.25 to 1.5 million for their release. Um, but the, if there's a problem with the display, do you really want to get yourself a watch that has a problem in it? And that's that's the question I pose uh, I pose to you all out there: is are you going to get your Apple Watch on the 24th? And if you do, and it's broken. Are you going to complain about it? Because I'm telling you right now, there's a problem with it. So don't complain about it. Simple as that. Yeah, getting uh, things replaced might be a little bit harder. Uh, exactly. So, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's a tri- tricky thing. You know, I know sometimes what that, you know, what that's caused by are different production lines, right? So, like, this pr- this whole production line is buggy or it's got you know some issue with it and so everything that comes off of that line is bad um like the video camera yeah just like this video camera um which is the same video camera we've used a lot but (laughs) oh yeah we're gonna try to figure this out or we are gonna figure out something um maybe maybe switch to your uh maybe switch to your facetime camera see if that makes a difference it doesn't even detect it like the no hardware, like yeah. Well, we'll talk about this afterward of the show, but <laughs> okay. yeah, it's a it's a bigger issue. So yeah, um, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So anyway, the the issue that I see is like it could be a, a secondary production line that's actually having the issues. So uh, there may be a primary one that's working fine, or you know, one of the primary lines is working fine. So yeah, there'll probably be some, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, oh, it's hard to say. So you're saying like uh, plant uh, there? There's part of the watches are being made at plant A, and part are being made at plant B, and there's a problem with plant B right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, that, I would that, say I've that, never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like every other one on the same line is messed up. If that's a problem, then it's like that means everyone could be messed up, and just some of them are passing. But um, I, I, you know, I don't know exactly what the problem is. That's that's just another possibility. But, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely definitely. right. It, it could be. It could be just that. I was thinking that you know, the AMOLED screens are being made by LG. That's who's supplying the. At least the, that's. I think that's what I read. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, we've always had problems with LCD screens and getting you know in mass production of an LCD screen, out having the resources to actually put it together. Um, so I was just guessing that they were just running out of some sort of 
something in the technology that they had to wait and get built so they could continue on. So, but and, and uh, but we don't know. Nobody's really uh, saying uh, this is all sources and rumors at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're they're definitely for sure that they're not going to be putting out the amount that they really wanted to put out for Apple watches. So, and of course yeah. we don't we don't know if if they're going to focus on the ten thousand dollar Apple Watch <laughs> first, yeah, uh, or or which one that is. So, yeah, I. I... It's a good point because what watch will they run out of? Oh, we don't have any of the $350 ones. You've got to buy the $550 watch if you want one. Yeah. Oh, that's a little bit harder. Oh, you know, like everybody's like, oh, I'm going to have to, do I really want it that bad? And yeah. they might, they might just want it that bad. They're like, I was going to walk out with a watch and you said you have some, but they're <laughs> $200 more than I wanted to spend. And yeah, I mean that that's a that's a tough place to be when you're when you're planning on three fifty and then they're exactly. asking for five fifty. So yeah, or ten thousand for that matter. I mean, and then there's there's now one with a crusted diamonds for like a hundred k or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There's a like kind of unofficial, you know, blinged out Apple watches that people are are doing that too. But yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I'm guessing the ten thousand dollar ones. They will be making exactly as many of those as they wanted. Uh, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, I'll get an Apple Watch. I'll sign the back. I'll kiss it, and then I'll sign, sell it for ten thousand dollars. Would you buy a ten thousand dollar watch if I did that? No. Okay. No, never mind. I won't do that. One thing we did notice is uh, is a question of whether the Apple Watch was geared towards women. Um, we looked at some of the Apple Watch models, and, and of course, they had the smaller wa Apple Watch and the larger Apple Watch, but it was all the same Apple Watch. It was just, you know, a little bit smaller. And, uh, and, and so, you know, and, and of course, women are going to buy Apple Watch, and it's, that's, that is, but is it that really geared, the, with fashion-wise, is it really geared towards women? And, you know, will it, will it end up being a part of their regular everyday lives and we're not talking you know the the tech and the geek girls because they're going to love that stuff we're talking about the everyday you know person the, the businesswoman will they go for something like a moto 360 or will they go or wait for will i am to come out with uh with the uh, what was that called again the uh the pulse pulse it no no the other one that he's working with the new one the new uh, one the tag hewer one is that it no that he was working with gucci oh okay gucci okay so are they going to wait for Gucci? Or are they going to go for the Apple Watch? So the, the, the little things that you, you you look at and you go, okay, well, yeah, maybe, maybe. So if they don't have to worry, if they don't have to worry about that factor, well, maybe they'll have enough watches to get through this first round. I don't yeah, know. yeah, and it's hard to say what they'll have enough enough time for. So yeah, definitely. So all right, well, let's move on to our next segment, a segment we call. Fund me, which is all about the uh, funding of technology, and uh, I don't have that queued up. Let's do that. There we go. <laughs> and let's talk about Quell. Is Quell the first pain relief wearable? Um, I don't know if you've seen these. They've had these commercials lately where you you put a strap around underneath your leg, and it's in it pushes on a nerve and that helps with your sciatic and stuff like that well this is i don't know how similar this device is it looks a lot like it but it's a leg strap device that's controlled by your phone if you suffer from chronic pain you basically adjust the strap to stimulate nerves through pulses that send signals to your brain so your phone sends the pulse to the device which then sends it to your brain which then sends it to the uh, area to block the pain the device is fda approved it has met its goal on the fundraiser, as you can see, at uh, two hundred ninety-five thousand um, dollars. You got about ten days to go in this uh, in this crowd fund. Uh, the base price is one hundred ninety-nine dollars in it. Um, but you know, it. I, I talked to Jennifer, who's a massage, my Jennifer, my girlfriend Jennifer, massage therapist, and we talked in depth about those devices and basically what they are. I think I just lost Luke on this. I'm but, here. Oh, okay. I it, it I heard I heard sound and they're gone. Anyway, the whole point is, um, we're talking. We were talking about if these devices are just, you know, uh, um, a snake oil, to an actual 
uh, as opposed to doing something like uh, going to a chiropractor or a massage therapist to work out the pain. Now, I'll tell you something, you know, uh, I, you know, I had a back problem last year when I went to New York. I came back, my back just went out. And uh, for the first time, I did experience sciatic nerve pain. And uh, I had it for like s four or five months. And we worked, um, uh, Jennifer worked it out uh, through massage. And I feel great nowadays. I, I still feel it every now and then, but, you know, uh, not as bad. And I, w I would look at this stuff. I don't know the, the technology. I don't know if it works or not, but something that you guys might want to take a look at and, and see if you want to invest in. So thoughts on that? Yeah, it's really, uh, really interesting. Um, now, now you have a you have a blank screen. This is interesting. Your your camera yeah. is re-evolving. <laughs> I I had to, I, I tried switching browsers uh, while you were talking. So uh, oh. it's an interesting thing. We're we're doing we're doing it live. So um, yeah, I mean it's impressive. They've they've raised three hundred thousand dollars, which they only had a hundred thousand dollar goal. So you know, there's obviously a high demand for this. Um, I don't think that they're doing. Um, uh, the shady thing we talked about on the last one where they're trying to sell pre-orders and stuff. They're just, you know, yeah. we're just selling the device. Here it is, you know, 200 bucks yeah. and 260 people signed up for that. Um, 250 people signed up uh, at for, for the sneak peek and then 624 signed up for the double takes. I mean, they, are, they have, you know, a thousand of these things that they're going to be making uh, for launch at least. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's just a, a really, really interesting idea that, you know, we're going to see more at home care, uh, more, you know, kind of customized care, smarter care, um, you know, because, um, yeah, it, it, it can be customized for you a little bit more. And, you know, you can you can play around with it a little bit more. And, and you know, in the long run, that's pretty cheap compared to a uh, going to a chiropractor or, or somebody else that uh, would have this kind of technology that they could use. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's all you know. If it works, it's great. Mm -hmm. If if it works for you, that's great. Um, some people some people believe that it's just a it's just a, a way to uh, uh, work around the problem, hmm. and the problem still exists, and you need to go to a doctor and get that figured out instead of putting on an electronic device that sends signals up to your brain to say, "Yeah, hey, no, it really doesn't hurt." I mean, that's kind of like. Wouldn't that be kind of like uh, getting a cortisone shot just to uh, numb the pain a little bit, but then the pain's still there, and then you do something very physical, and then, of course, then you have long-term damage as opposed to getting things fixed the right way and get it done? Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't, you know, masking the pain is one is, is one thing. Um, you know, sometimes that's okay, right? You know, you take Advil, uh, you're not... Uh, you know, just to just to block some of the pain, and Whoa. then um, <laughs> there you, you are. know, uh, there, then there's the idea of covering up pain that you really should be feeling and not having anything, and that would be extremely bad. So yeah, <laughs> I love that you were you were you were you had a, a really interesting echo to you there as you yeah. Uh, I I was again switching back. Trying to figure out how if we can if we can do this without losing it, but That's okay. um, yeah. So yeah, I, I think it, it's important for people to realize like this does not replace going to a doctor. This is you know this is not a professional you know medical uh, advice uh, device that you know has been yeah. customized exactly to you. It's like now maybe you could take this thing into a doctor and you know find out what your at-home treatment is with this device. Exactly. And all of a sudden, then it's becoming, you know, it's like those at-home blood pressure monitors or whatever, where it's like, well, the doctor told me what I should do, and they also told me, if you start having this problem, stop using it, come in, like, there's there's something else wrong, you know. But um, if it's something of like, yeah, you, were, you could come into the doctor and we could hook up some electrodes and, you know, uh, do what we, you know, use the equipment here, or this at-home one actually works just as well, um, it will save you a bunch of doctor visits, oh, save yeah. you a bunch of time yeah. and money. So, you know, why not? We got uh, we got some interesting items in the bedroom. And they're, they're, hey, only, oh. yeah. they're <laughs> there only for therapeutic reasons. I mean, we have a, uh, uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> we have, uh, it's, it's called, it's, uh, you get it 
you can go down to Target or something like that and get it. So it, they oh, call sure. it they call it a noodle. And it's about uh-huh. oh yeah they do it's, yeah stop it. <laughs> it's about yay long and it's about oh, yeah. this big and it's 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 it. You use it to roll yourself, and it's really it, it really has helped my back, mm-hmm. um, my legs, um, especially since I have. It's like a, what do they call it? Fasciitis, and basically the nerves in my in my feet are too sensitive for touching, so um, it's helped on that. And uh, so, it, so we we use those devices just to to uh, keep our you know our, our muscles going and go from there. And that's it, nothing more. <laughs> All right. So. You, your mind's in the gutter, mister. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a new host if your mind is that much in the gutter in this, uh, uh-huh. this show. Uh-huh. I can't yeah. get a new go. I can't get a new host. So yeah. I'll have to deal yeah. with you. And then, yeah. of course, you know, you know, we could talk about you and Birdie, but, you know, the, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but, uh, you know, <laughs> stop it. So. I don't know where this is going. but All right. Let's yeah. move on here. Let's get into the main subject here because, you know, Luke's mind's in the in the wearable technology gutter for some freaking mm-hmm. reason. So you might want to change your audio, by the way, Luke, to a studio. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, let's talk about, you know, hey, okay, so last couple of weeks I've been on the road. I started in New York City uh, where I got to uh, I got to meet up with Marco. Uh, Marco's been on the show before. In fact, uh, here's a nice picture of me and Marco um, right here. And uh, as you can see, the Very Freedom cool. Tower is right behind us. So I went for an HP event, uh, learning about HP printers, but we got to walk around. Uh, I got to go to the MakerBot office. We got to uh, learn a little bit about some of the stuff. Well, I got to learn about the stuff that's being made. But then Marco goes, well, do you want to really see a really good <laughs> maker uh, place? And I said, yeah. So we went to this place called iMaker, and it's an independent uh, uh, printing shop. And they were making some really awesome stuff. Uh, we talked about the, uh, they have now the Flex, uh, what's the, yeah, it's called Flex, uh, uh, whatever they call the uh, the plastic, um, where you can actually make devices that bend and flex. I saw shoes that were being made. I saw, um, you know, uh, little toys with wings that were super thin. You know, and and you could like make them. You know, you you do that, and they'd fl- they flutter all over the place. Um, we saw we saw uh, material that was being made out of certain types of wood, because um, they have a uh, they have a extruder plastic that has bamboo in it, and it also has other types of wood, so they can actually make three D wood models, and that was pretty sweet. But we also got to see a lot of the wearable technology. Um, that they're building with the uh, with the 3D printers and some stuff I can't talk about. There are some stuff that uh, that you know they had in their display window. Um, we saw a, a GoPro camera mount, um, a few of those uh, in 3D printing. So it's just amazing what's going on there. So I got I'm gonna I'm gonna work on getting back to New York and really delve into the 3D printing scene in New York when it comes to wearables and 3D printing for that matter. It was an amazing time, and and of course Marco, he he, uh, he said hi to you, Luke. So yeah, it was too bad, too bad that you couldn't be part of of that uh, tour. Yeah, no, it sounds really interesting. Uh, yeah, the the advances in three D printing have come a long way in the last few years, especially um, you know just the new kind of materials that they're coming up with. Like, yeah, that's amazing. Like uh, wood based stuff, where yeah, you would print it out and you know. A little bit of sanding and some painting or something and people probably wouldn't even realize that there was a like that it was 3d printed yeah definitely so it's a it's some cool stuff and and uh and new york is they've they've got a just an amazing um group of people that ha- are doing that and it's just uh i i can't wait to get back and see a little bit more of the 3d prints and, and stuff like that and he even made me a couple things which uh i can't really talk about because i'm working on some videos with them. Um, but with due time, you'll see it, and I'll show them on the, uh, on the show eventually and go from there. So, All yeah. right. Well, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. It sounds great. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, then uh, from there, I went to Phoenix to drive a Ford uh, Edge, which was pretty cool. 
But then after that, I went to uh, Austin for South by Southwest. And we were tr really trying to get the show down to South by Southwest since Luke was only a couple hours north. But uh, it just didn't happen. And uh, something to think about for next year. We'll, we'll just put mm -hmm. it that way. So, um, But I, I saw it. I saw a lot um, since my main focus wasn't on wearables at South by Southwest. Um, I didn't get a chance to really delve into some of the South by Southwest wearables, but I did read a lot of articles. And uh, it wasn't as lucrative as I thought it was going to be at South by Southwest. But what I did see, um, I went to, we went to the Pebble, um, the Pebble party. And we got to got to see the brand new which 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 pebble is that called the Fe pebble first Ooh, the, the, the brand new, new the new pebble watch yeah uh, I don't remember what what makes what the new name is yeah so but I I did get some pictures and I'm trying to to pull them up as best as possible um, pebble time steel yeah that's it pebble time pebble time that's it so we saw that and I don't have the for some reason I don't have, I have this picture but I don't have the picture with Eric the uh, founder of Pebble, um, just showing off the Pebble. But we got some really cool pants, and uh, they looked so good on my head. Um, that's, that's me. That's not Wes how you wear pants. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's me and Wesley. Uh, Wesley's down. He works with Hip Chat. He's a good friend of mine. And then, of course, uh, Jeff, who's on the other side. I just met Jeff, and I think he's also with Hip Chat, but I'm not 100% sure. But we got to uh, we got to talk to a lot of people. Uh, at Pebble, they also had other Kickstarters inside that uh, that event. So I got to play a device that could become a guitar, could become a violin, um, could become a piano, um, whatever whatever instrument you needed. So you held it; it was like this big stick, and you'd hold it and play like a guitar, and then you put it up on your neck and and you take out your iPhone and you'd Bluetooth to connect together, and you use that as the bow and played that. And then, uh, and then set it down, and you played it uh, kind of like a piano, and that was that was really cool from there. Um, the next thing I did, I got to see my first Microsoft wearable, the Microsoft Band, um, and that was pretty interesting. Um, talked to a Microsoft employee; he showed it to me. He had an older Lumia um, where he paired it together. But it's a it's a very apparently a very popular band. A lot of people are 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 picking it up, even though they don't have uh, Windows phones. And of course, it compared to an Android or compared to an iOS, but basic functionality, as opposed to a more uh, GUI not GUI but a uh, uh, rich uh, environment that uh, that they can get. But it, it looks like a, it looks like a Fitbit or any of the other ones, the Square square wrap around type uh, band around your wrist and uh, it, it it has a lot of the windows the windows cards or the metro look or whatever you whatever they're calling it nowadays and uh, it looked very impressive I, I was I was really interested in that and got to play with it for a little bit so and that's basically that uh, device that I saw there um, also a couple other devices I got to see misfits devices uh, misfit is a company that does a little bit more than just wearable technology. They have light bulbs. They have home automation stuff as well. That's also actually part of wearable technology because their watch can control the lights, can control the devices around the house. And then uh, my friend Ian uh, was uh, there with Withings, and uh, Withings it has a new watch that, and, and both of these devices I'm actually going to be getting. So in the up and coming weeks, I'll have products to actually show you and uh and go from there so but basically that was what i saw at south by south oh i also saw a gaming ring um i can't remember the name of the company but it was basically you put on the ring and then of course you can control on your in your games a little bit more and that was part of the s uh, south by gaming area which i didn't have a chance to get to it it, it really got to be all of a sudden four days with a lot of stuff that you had to cover, and it just trying to get from one place to the other and still attend some sessions uh, was was kind of tough. But uh, lots of cool stuff with wearables. Not as much as I thought there'd be, but enough to really get my juices going and uh, see what uh, what what's going on in the space and and what what's coming out there. So, 
Uh, anything that that you heard from uh, South by Luke that you wanted to talk about? Uh, the only thing that I saw, and I don't know if it was actually at South by or, or if it was just mentioned, it, it probably was mentioned there, uh, was that Gucci uh, smart device that they're uh, partnering with Will I Am about. Uh, and everybody was just mentioning that because they're like, whatever happened with the pulse? And it was, well, nothing. Oh, great. Okay. So now you're. Now you're starting up a new one, so we'll you know we'll see where that goes. But you know, celebrities always get a little bit more uh, love and uh, attention from uh, these these like device makers. So yeah, you know, one person that really impressed me at South by Southwest was uh, Sir Mix a lot. He came on. We we have there's this area called the pay the uh, the blogger lounge, and and PayPal sponsored it. Um, really great blogger lounge. We get a lot of cool guests. That's where I get a lot of my my photos with uh with celebrities is is at that lounge and uh they uh they uh, uh sir mix a lot was on stage and he was talking about how he was he was basically a tinkerer before before technology was implemented he said it, it, back i i i made stuff when it was called electronics <laughs> as opposed to uh uh uh, devices, technology devices, and uh, he would he would build like reverb uh, equalizers and stuff like that for musicians. And uh, we he talked about a lot of different things. One of the products that he talked about was another. It's not really wearable technology, but it's a it's a piece called uh, Zuda, which I just talked about. Or I just showed off on my on Geekazine.com. It's a printer that you can take with you. It looks like a teardrop, and and the reason why it's a teardrop is so you can align the corner, the top left corner of the screen. So basically, you call up on your phone what you want to print, and you Bluetooth into that device, and then the little mini ro robot. You set the piece of paper down on on table, and you let the robot just go back and forth and print it out. Wow, which was really cool. But uh, Sir Mixalot was talking about tons of of technology that he's part of. And he's very proud to be part of the South by Southwest interactive community on that. So check it out, check him out on what he does there. It's just, it's just amazing. So did, did you know that, uh, that Sir mix a lot was, was more of a tinkerer than he was uh, a musician? No, I did not know that. That's a fun fact. Fun little That's factor kind, there. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that he was, uh, that they found him and that he was actually like, Oh yeah, this is totally awesome. It's a little gizmo that does this cool little thing. I'm like, wow, it's kind of interesting that he would actually be legitimately excited about something like that. Oh yeah, I was I was very excited about. That. I mean, printing technology, you know, it's a little bit passe, and any company that tries to continue in printing technology without making big printers, because I can go to a hotel and I can print something out. I can go to a to a FedEx and print something out in whatever city I'm in. Um, and, uh, so it, anybody that's trying to advance printing technology, I don't know, it, we still need it, but it's, there's possibilities in getting something printed if you need to. So, but other than that, um, I think that was pretty much it. There was one other thing that I noticed here, and this is actually something that I want to talk to anybody that's, that's interested in getting into a new idea. And that is chargers. Um, this is the first time that I have not come back from an event with a USB drive. I've well, well let's put it this way. I've come I came back with more phone chargers than I do USB drives nowadays. In fact, I gave away, you know, I gave away three different USB chargers that I brought with me and then I gained them all back in swag bags and stuff like that, which is very interesting, but now that we've got this, these wearable technologies, which won't have a USB connection on most of them, and they use the new uh, uh, Cheech wireless charging, will we start to see wireless chargers with wireless? Or I'm sorry, will we start to see uh, uh, phone chargers and device chargers with wireless capabilities? So, and I know uh, when when Marco sent you the uh, 3D printed one uh, device for your 360, he sent you yeah. the Qi chargers on that. So, yeah, yeah. How, you know, it can't be that difficult to actually make a wireless charger like that, right? Well, so the, the specialized charging hardware, um, yeah, is not real expensive, like uh, 10 or 20 bucks uh, for the actual electronics. And so you can put that into pretty much any form factor. 
So it would not surprise me at all if there was a, a charger that was just, you know, another quarter of an inch thicker that had just one of those key chargers, chi chargers right on top of it. And then that way you could just set a device on there and start charging it, which would be great for phones or even better, like you said, for watches or yeah. other stuff. So um, that's really, I think, where where things are going to be headed. And yeah, that's probably what you'll see in a year or two is everything will be like, oh yeah, it's one of those wireless charge packs because you got to have that because yeah. how else are you supposed to charge your watch in the middle of the day when it dies from yeah. some app going rogue and eating your battery? Well, think about it. I mean, we'll probably be charging more devices. I mean, my phone, my phone, I had to charge at least once in the day and I, and I turned on the battery saver on Android on, mm -hmm. and I had two phones with me. I had my Nexus five, um, this one right here. And then I had my, uh, I had, uh, the Sony Xperia Z3, which, uh, Verizon, uh, wireless is, is letting me borrow to test out and amazing, amazing phone, by the way. And, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, both of the devices I've had, I had to charge at least once in the day. So I had to take, and I took my Mophie pack with me. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are, are going to be taking more and more battery chargers with their phones when they go out to these events because that is one place where that just, the juice just drains on whatever device you have. Yeah, so. yeah, I definitely understand that. Yeah, so... But anyway, uh, so that's that's what I saw at South by Southwest. Wearable, th th there was probably a lot of other wearable technology I didn't get a chance to see. Uh, Mashable House had some uh, wearable technology there, which I did get to see. That's where I, I met up with Ian and, and the Withings stuff. Um, and, of course, uh, it was it, it's such a big place. Um, there were some sessions on wearable technology. Um, one session that uh, I heard uh, didn't do too well. But I did. I don't know which one it was, and, and I and I can't remember uh, what they were talking about. But uh, you know, it, it's just you know so so spread out sometimes that to try and get to a session is just impossible, or uh, or an event is impossible. The IEEE Spectrum event um, that I went to, I got to see uh, what's called uh, TDCS, which is called transcranial brain stimulation. So you basically put something on your head, and it shoots not you know, big current, but little pulses into your head and it's supposed to help with like depression or sleep deprivation or and stuff like that, depending on where you have it placed on your cranium. Um, and uh, I also uh, saw a guy who actually uh, was hooking up electrodes to your to the arm. And I'll have these videos on, uh, on uh, coming on the, in the upcoming weeks. And so he basically put the electrodes on a person's arm and he had the person squeeze and then he brought out a robotic hand that just sat there. And every time he squeezed, the robotic hand did this. And he showed how you, you, we can use all these little bits and pieces in our in our arms and in, in our legs and whatever to actually control something. So, and that would be perfect for you know if you're in a, if you need to control something in a room that you can't be in because there's too much radiation or too much, you know, it's just not the climate's not there for you, or somebody you know a lot of 3d printed uh, arms where you could see a lot of robotics I, i'm wondering if i have that picture here um where you could see uh where if if you lost your arm you'd have you just use this 3d printed arm and then you just use your muscles to open and close the hand and it's it's amazing i don't have the picture uh, close by but uh just a lot of cool stuff um at south by southwest when it comes to the wearables so. very cool very cool. Sounds amazing. Oh yeah, it was it was it's a lot of fun. If you've never been to South by Southwest Interactive, it's a fun time. There's a lot of cool people there to meet, like myself. And uh and go from there. So all right. I know <laughs> I know that really didn't involve you too much there, Luke. I apologize on that. No, no, it's great. Like I I, I just love hearing about that kind of stuff because yeah, I I didn't make it down there. So um, yeah. really interesting to hear what's going on and um definitely Definitely a fun place to be, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely have to, we'll, we'll put together something and maybe uh, next year for South by Southwest, we'll do our Wearable Today show right from South by Southwest. So mm -hmm. that'd we'll be great. Happens. We'll see. Okay. All right, cool. Well, that does it for this episode of uh, Wearable Today. Um, Luke, why don't you, while you still have video, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? So, Luke Luca on Twitter 
or on Google Plus at google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. Uh, or for this show, you can email me at luke at wearabletoday.com or birdie at wearabletoday.com. She's been nice and quiet tonight. It's B-I-R-D-I-E at wearabletoday.com. All right. And, of course, you can find me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put in a Geek. Um, Geekazine is my Twitter handle. And, of course, Jeff at wearabletoday.com if you have any questions or comments. Uh, we'll go from there and, uh, and check it out. Topics, uh, if you have topics, if you want to be on the show, uh, if you've got a wearable technology and you want to talk about it, let me know. I've, uh, I did also line up a couple guests for future episodes of Wearable Today, so I was really happy about that. Um, we're going to work on getting them on the show and talk about their, their uh, wearable technology products and go from there. So, But anyway, that does it for this episode of uh, Wearable Today. Luke, thank you very much for being on the show, and thank you for letting me uh, take a couple weeks off there. Sounds good. I know... Uh... I know we all need that break every once in a while. Yeah, definitely. And someday I'll take it. And this is more of work than anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. You're, you're still working even yeah. if you're not on the show. So Exactly. So, And I was hoping to get you know get an interview where we could have po- posted that, but it just didn't happen. There's a lot, too much to happen, have happen, and, and just not enough time to do post-production. So anyway, that does it for this episode of The Wearable Today. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. My name is Jeffrey Powers. We'll be back next week. Uh, I think uh, we've got a few week run, uh, and then we're going to be on season three. Season three is coming up, Luke. So get your Amazing. camera fixed. Yeah, yeah. Get your camera fixed. <laughs> I'll work on that. We'll get that season three going in the next coming weeks here. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you next time. Until then, you guys geek out on your wearable technology, and take care.